Good morning. We have a full, a full, full house. A warm welcome to you all. Uh, this is the seventh edition of the annual meeting. My name is Arjen, Arjen Broussard. Uh, I used to be the director up until last week. So this is actually my celebration, it's my anniversary, so to say, and my goodbye. Um, a welcome to you all. Um, we're going to do, we have an exciting lineup, uh, I hope, as always. Um, we have a good interaction with you and in the lab, because you are now here with 600 registrations, which is actually a large number as compared to even previous years when we had no COVID. Uh, but there are another 80 or 100 people online that are watching the stream that we have here. Um, it's, it's a bit of a difficult week because we are here in the Johan Cruyff Arena and you know what happens on the 4th of October, right? So he, who is from Napoli? Is there somebody in the room from Napoli? Because they had a great evening on Tuesday uh, when Ajax played Napoli and they lost 6-1. Uh, to one. So it was a, a big tragedy because I'm an Ajax fan. Okay, so now you know how I am. I'm from Amsterdam, uh, original, and, uh, and I will also remain Amsterdam uh, fan, an Ajax fan. Um, let's see who you are. Uh, we have uh, Slido in place, so slido.com. If you would grab your smartphone uh, and uh, link onto slido.com and uh, click on this number, the, what is it, 35 million 77079. The question is as follows. Um, the question is as follows. Um, all right. Who is steering the slides here? The question is as follows. Um, is this your first time? That is, I think, an important question. Because then you have a lot to learn. Um, no, I've been here a couple of times before. Um, no, I've been here more than five times. So the seniors, so this screen here is failing. Uh, the seniors are in the minority. And, and the newbies are in the majority. So welcome to you all. More than 50 people, for, for 50, more than 50% of the people is the first time. Great. All right. Then the next uh, question is, um, what are you? What are you doing in life, uh, professionally seen? Are you a... <laughs> If you're here for the first time and you're a principal investigator, that's a unique situation, then I need to talk to you. Uh, however, if you're, let's say, a research assistant, then I would understand, and everything in between is even better. It's great. Okay, so a lot of master students, 30% of the people are master students. That's great. Excellent. 7% principal investigators. All right, everybody is here. Thank you very much for, for joining. Um, what we're going to do today is uh, we're gonna go, I'm going to get you through this program, and I'm going to say a couple of things about history, about the lineup uh, that we have for you, and uh, we're going to especially uh, enjoy presentations from different generations in, the, in Amsterdam Neuroscience. So the first thing what I do is, is I will actually introduce my, my co-directors, so actually, I'm, I'm ex-director then, and the new directors are here on the name. So th the first disclaimer is that Martin was texting me this morning and said, I, I turned sick uh, last night, and I turned out to be COVID positive. He's not really sick, but he didn't want to uh, be a risk factor. That actually holds also true for Jennifer. But Jennifer, actually, she will actually report to the, to the emergency room uh, later on in, a, in an hour or so, because he's really sick. So I thought there are different variants of, uh, of uh, COVID around. Uh, uh, probably I thought you were not turning so sick from Omicron, but apparently that is... Uh, and so we have a substitute, actually a great substitute. He's very nervous because he believes that his professionals are self-organizing, so he has no clue what Jennifer has uh, made up, what she cooked up. All right, so Hilgo at Browning will, will substitute for Jennifer. All right, let me, let, me, let me get you to my, to my slides. Okay, so first of all, Amsterdam Neuroscience um, ha, has, a, has, a, has a long tradition of, of organizing itself. Um, they say that uh, God created Amsterdam. Um, 
I think Amsterdam is of the people, and I think we actually connected the name neuroscience to it. And the way that we did that is by organizing ourselves in groups around focuses. And you can see that here. So we have clinical programs. We have a large uh, translational program on the left side. And you will see the colors of these programs back in the, in the following slides. OK. So Amsterdam Neuroscience is a stakeholder community because it's across different legal entities, two universities, two medical faculties, and two hospitals. And that brings together around 800 or more investigators, of which now three quarters uh, of the people are here in this room. So that is very great, and another 80 or so people are, are present. Of course, it all starts, it all starts with, with excellent science, right? And excellent science comes from training and from new appointments. And new appointments um, we have done over the last six years, um, so you see here on the left side uh, our programs, and in each and every of those programs we appointed new leadership over the last uh, six or seven years. Many of them are here, some of them have not even inaugurated. Yesterday we had the inauguration of, of Martijn, Yolanda inaugurated uh, also two years ago. She had her uh, public uh, inauguration, Hilgo did, Christian did. Ronald did, but he still needs to be uh, inaugurated. And that also holds true for a unique new principal investigator, Leon de Bruyning, who is a professor in neurophilosophy. OK, so then the next thing is that um, excellent science is actually does not come from principal investigators. It comes from team science. And team science is the way that we organize our centers of uh, expertise. Here you see on the right side all our clinical centers. Um, so there's a long tradition around Alzheimer, Parkinson, deep brain stimulation, MS, uh, neuroinfection, uh, lacodystrophy, and stroke. So that is the neurology side of things. On the psychiatry side of things, we have two new centers, the one that is led by Hilgo Browning, and that was launched two years ago, uh, and a new center that we will launch with Christian Finkers and Brenna Pennings. And then on the left side, you see the two biology, neurobiology departments uh, that actually represent uh, the Center of Excellence and the affiliated center um, of, uh, of the, the Royal Academy of Sciences. So team sciences is, is very important, and, and that is not just a matter of putting out names and logos, it's, it's a true story. And the story is, I think, represented in the way that you see it here illustrated on, uh, on, on these pictures, in the way that we organized ourselves, in the way that we excelled in, in science and in, in, um, in making, making impact. Uh, uh, of course, the way um, that I introduced uh, some neuroscience many times is that it is all about translation. So bringing different disciplines together. I think when I, when I, did, when I was a little bit younger, um, I was in a lab in, in, in New York, in, in Manhattan, and there were still old school organizations. So every principal investigator was organizing itself, and so he hired, she hired a, neuro, a neurophysiology postdoc, an omics postdoc, and someone doing geneticist, and so that was all organized around the principal investigator. We no longer do that. We actually we organize in teams, and so the teams are here actually quite large. Uh, for instance, uh, the, the neurology teams and the psychiatry research programs are uh, around 100 or so investigators uh, 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 grouping together, and that also holds through for each of the colored areas here, here on, on, the, on the left side. And these teams do not work in isolation, um, because if you plot co-authorships, this is a little bit of a cloudy uh, slide, but if you plot co-authorships, so the different, the different colors that you see here, are the, that are the same colors over here, and if you plot co-authorships between the different research programs, you see here what we did in the period 2016 to 18, and here you see that this network is even larger and much more wired uh, in the second period. So, co-authorships, collaboration, and then what is, what is it actually about? I think it is clear that um, when, when you have a center 
that is, uh, is actually uh, administered by, by Amsterdam UMC together with two scientists, science uh, faculties that actually we need to focus on different stakeholders. So we need to focus on patients, we need to focus on training, we need to focus actually on an, a larger ring uh, uh, outside the community. But let's start with patients. So patients is a central team. For many of us, patients are the reason why we are in this profession. And um, we, we see that also on annual meetings that we organized over the last seven years. We brought actually patients on stage. We had dialogue with them, we involved them. It's actually impact by design. If you ask an investigator what a patient needs, I think the investigator will give the best answer if he or she talks to the patients. And that is what we did. So here uh, you see one of our earlier annual meetings. Um, th uh, this is uh, uh, Mr. No Newman from South Africa. He had a visual cortex uh, uh, prothesis many years ago, and he is telling us about uh, uh, that experience. Um, and, and, and you see here all the way, this is a patient with extreme tremor. Um, this is a young physician who suffers from multiple sclerosis. And so we also celebrated resilience. Um, this is one of our centenarians uh, that is investigated in the group of Henne Holstuigen, who was 104 at the time that we interviewed him here on stage. You see, this is not only illustration, you can actually evidence-based this storytelling. If you plot a societal heat map, and this heat map is actually um, produced by looking at 8,000 publications over the last six years from Armstrong Neuroscience and plotting it against a world average, which is actually the world average is one, which is outside the scale. So even blue is here twofold uh, the world average. If you then look at the terms that we use in our publications, many terms are very relevant uh, to uh, 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 professionals in hospitals. And that holds true for certain programs more than for others, but I think the entire institute works uh, on, on topics that are relevant for, for hospitals. That also holds true for the relevance with respect to clinical guidelines. If you do the societal heat map plotting there, you see two, pro two psychiatry programs uh, doing very well, up to fourfold world efforts, and the stroke program uh, similarly, uh, is, is, is a very hot topic in clinical guidelines uh, in, in where we publish. If you look at the way in which the, the topics that we study are reflected in the media, you see that actually the center states is taken by uh, everything ar around memory. Um, and that holds true, I think, for, for, for the neurodegeneration program. It holds true also for fundamental uh, neuroscience, because this is actually twofold uh, I'm sorry, I'm just making a mess out of this. All right, let's skip back six slides, that's great. <laughs> All right. If you look at here, this is actually where the scale also started, two-fold world efforts. So all the blue colors are still way above world efforts uh, with respect to media interest. Okay, then what else is uh, neuroscience is about? I think neuroscience is, is, is also about working with external stake stakeholders. We are not a closed community. We do not invent all our own medicines. We do not invent all our own companion diagnostics. Actually, we, we get it in collaboration with external stakeholders. And I'm here to tell you that we actually we need investors. We need companies. We need health funds. We need government. Um, and we need also to influence politics. Uh, we need science parks where actually incubator buildings are built in order to actually do market pool and actually bring entrepreneurs to the science campus. Uh, the way that we organize this, I think, is best reflected by, by this beautiful illustration um, that was made uh, by Michela, um, which actually reflects the way in which we actually organize the matchmaking that Amsterdam Neuroscience wants to do with industry. And we do this matchmaking in a dedicated, embedded way. So we actually, we have professionals working shoulder by shoulder with the clinicians, um, with the investigators doing animal research, with the professionals doing omics, etc., and making actually a handshake with the outside world. And that is done actually by this team that I had the honor to work with over the last 10 years. 
Um, there's a couple of people missing. Dilek is missing. She's here in the room. Sanne is missing. Um, Diederik is missing. Diederik van der Beek, my co-director, who's also not here this morning, but he will be back in the afternoon. He has a thesis defense of one of his many PhD students. Um, but as a side job, we actually we worked with this team. This team is now led by, by Peter, who is actually here on the second row, and Marco. It's a big team. They're very effective. They actually tripled uh, the funding uh, from external fundraisers. And this was not the reason why we did it. It was just collateral damage that we organized. By talking to industry, by actually lending contracts, by uh, providing opportunities uh, of doing new clinical trials on campus, we actually we find a meaningful way to organize uh, collaboration with industry. That was meaningful. It was uh, fitting uh, all the, the rules and guidelines of integrity, um, and it was at market value done. All right. So this is a, this was, uh, it is actually sad that I stepped down as, as a director because I have to leave this, this team now and working on their own, but I'm sure that they will do great. All right. Um, you see that also reflected in the way that we publish the relevance of the terms that we use in our publication uh, with respect to professionals in industry is very hot. Then you see actually on the right side uh, happening uh, many, many red colors. Um, you see it also with respect to patent filing, up to twofold world efforts, actually, especially in the field of molecular and, uh, and cellular mechanisms. So that is evidence-based evidence storytelling. Um, and so what's, what's, what is actually um, left there to tell you, uh, apart from the fact that we actually are on a great wave at the moment with neuroscience? Well, <clears throat> the, I think the story that I need to tell you is that, that we are here to facilitate. And this facilitation, this way in which we organized, is actually done by, by this team here. So that is my other team. And that is also why I'm so sad that I have to leave office, because I have to, to leave this team. And the, the fact that everything what you will see today is so extremely well organized is not because of the fact that I am micromanaging, which I do, but it's actually because these people are here in the office. So let's give them a big hand here. All right, so I made sure that I didn't forget that one. Okay, so um, Anita joined actually the office many years ago, uh, already 13 years. She is a solid factor in multitasking many times. Uh, Naomi joined the team in 2019. Lisette joined the team in 2020. And uh, Michela joined the, two, the team in, in uh, 2022, in fact. So she is the youngest team member, but actually she is making an impact. Because the impact that we organize you will see it reflected in the way that we have a footprint now in the social media. And you see that, uh, for instance, over here, you see that on our website, uh, on average, we have more than 20,000 visitors per month. I think the latest ratings were up to 27,000 visitors on the website. That same holds through from LinkedIn. These are old numbers. I think we are closer to double of the number that you see here. Um, and we also um, do that in a more extended way by, by, by actually producing these magazines. These magazines, from the start, uh, actually were, were produced uh, by the office team that I just showed you, with Naomi Forstermans in charge. Um, Diederik was the one who actually picked up the message from uh, one of our scientific advisory boards, advising us that we should actually works towards this evidence-based storytelling. So storytelling is very important in the magazines. You see that in the way that we also had our motto. Uh, the motto uh, in the early days was we care about the brain. More later on it was connecting the people, the science and the brain. Um, and actually we are now at the moment that we actually want to launch the new edition today. So that is very exciting, the new edition looks like this. Uh, you see a QR code everywhere in the room. Uh, and if we now go to the, um, to the flippable version of the magazine, I will show you some of the content and tell you a little bit about the science of individuality. So we, so we are here. We, let's go to the next page. So, so we have 
done interviews. Naomi Forstermans and her team has done interviews with Rob Buiter, uh, with a great team of photographers. And let's go to Nicole Wolf, for instance. Nicole Wolf is one of the new appointed uh, neurologists. She is, uh, now let's, let's stay on the top of this magazine. Let's, 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 let's keep her picture on top. Um, and then we have an interview actually. So this is Nicole, she is a neurologist working on child neurology. On the next interview, um, then we have actually Guido and Christian, uh, Guido van Wingen and Christian uh, Finkers, who actually you will see this afternoon leading the session on in individuality in, in psychiatry. Next interview is uh, on the next page um, by, uh, by uh, uh, Natalia Gurionova. She has a, a very exciting project, a FIDI granted project uh, on uh, actually uh, uh, intellectuality, on, on what makes people smart. So she actually, she is also on the cover of the magazine. She is holding there a piece of human cortex and she is studying the morphology and the electrophysiology of pyramidal cells in human cortex that comes from the operation uh, circuit. Next, we have Brenda Pennings. She, had, she landed our second uh, a graffiti grant, 20 million euros, uh, for a grant together with Christian Finkers and Eko de Geus from Public Health on stress in action. Um, she is also the vice president of our Royal Academy of Sciences. Uh, so, a very prestigious um, member of, of the management team of Amsterdam Neuroscience. Next slide, um, there is Menno, and, and Menno actually uh, was also one of the people who did uh, do become independent principal investigator. He is an associate professor, he has a FID grant, uh, and actually he is also the chair of the trans translational neuroscience network that we, the, the series of webinars that we organized over the last, uh, over the last year. Okay, so then um, we have uh, Inge, uh, Inge uh, Verberg. She actually works on companion diagnostics. She works in the Alzheimer's Center, actually in the department of the clinical chemistry lab. And instead of doing PET scans, or actually doing lumbar punctions and looking at the proteins in, in the spinal fluid, she looks in a drop of blood in serum to see whether she can pick up the proteins that are, are, are causing, um, are causing um, Alzheimer's disease. So across generations, individual, individuality is the central theme in many of the questions that we have there. Now let's go back, let's go back to, the, to the index, uh, if possible. And the index actually shows actually another interview. You see four faces there. Let's, let's go into that, in the, into that interview. Uh, here you see four faces, so my face on the left side, and, and the new team of directors with uh, actually Martin Smith, who actually turned out to be COVID positive this morning. He's the chair of, uh, of Neuro uh, department in, in, uh, in Sils, in the Watergraafsmeer. He's the co-director. Guus Smit, um, he is actually the chair of this team, and uh, Jolanda Peinerberg. And actually Jolanda and Guus are here. Please welcome them on stage. So if you, if you go here. So, so my first question to, uh, to you, Gus and Yolanda is, so, so were you not busy enough? Is that, so why, why are you doing this? Uh, so Yolanda, you, you are a neurologist. You are the medical director of the Alzheimer's Center. And on top of that, you take on now this duty. Yeah. Why? Actually, um, I, of course, I'm busy enough, but... Uh, I think it's really my passion for neuroscience that brought me to do this, and I feel that in this position I can make a difference to bring people together, to connect people together. Yes. Uh, I have a lot of knowledge on what happens in the patient side, but I would really like to, to see that connected to what happened in the fundamental research. Yes, so patients are very important to you. What is your, what is your focus of research? Um, my focus of research is how young onset dementia evolves. Right. So young, young, young patients you're oh, looking at? We, we see patients that have Alzheimer's disease or related disorders before 65. And those disorders are, apart from very disturbing for the families, a very good way to investigate how dementia uh, right. evolves. So you make a connection with many disciplines, I guess. It's a familial form of dementia. So there must also come genetics to that. Genetics field. come to that, but it's most often sporadic. So we're still uh, intriguing how, it's, how it evolves. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you for, thank you very much. Guus, how is that for you? 
you are a little bit more my generation. Yeah. So yeah. are you just taking yeah. on the responsibility, I'm, I'm, I'm actually or are you still are you still up to it? I'm actually exactly of your generation, in the precise year even. Um, yeah. No, Arjen, I, I, you know, I found myself staring out the window and thinking, what to do next, <laughs> right? <laughs> no, no, no. Now I have also a very, uh, I'm very passionate in science, of course. Very I'm good. leading an institute where, where we have all kinds of research directions that um, that work on, of course, all kinds of aspects of the brain, and we try to translate that, of course, to clinical research. You know, and I, I think uh, Amsterdam Neuroscience is, of course, the platform to make that happen. So Excellent. I'm really looking forward to bring our research further in that respect. So my next question is, what are you going to do? What are you going to do as a new team of directors? Right. Well, one of the things, of course, is, is that, uh, as you showed today, eh, we, have, we are in a current great state with Amsterdam Neuroscience, but we have to look forward. Yes. You know, shall, we, shall we look at yeah. those challenges? Yeah. Right. Let that give yeah. you the states where right. you can point out. Right. Right. OK, good. Yeah, so if you're looking at uh, the, the number one, for instance, on top, eh, it says, Precision science, eh, from precision science to precision medicine. So what, what are we dealing with? You know, we are, we are all facing uh, in neuroscience that we see that there is a lot of, it's the topic of today, basically, eh, individuality. We see differences, individual differences. We see that people have different opportunities, but also different vulnerabilities, basically, right? We can measure, uh, and we have now the tools, of, to, of course, to look at all these individual differences. And now the question is of how to bring these science tools, these great science tools, where you can diagnose, where you can edit even the genome. How can you bring that to medicine? All right? And that is a, a next step that we have to take. It's a challenge that's out there. And I think we are ready for it now to take, that, to take up on that challenge. And that, and that needs an effort of all of you, basically. And we are going to do that together. We are going to look at how we are going to translate these beautiful tools into the practic practice of the clinic. Now, the second thing is, of course, that as you all know, uh, we are confronted with a lot of data these days. You know, we have all kinds of beautiful instruments that bring us measurements in high throughput. In fact, in all parts of neurosciences, right? And that, that means, in fact, that we are confronted, we are almost drowning in information. Okay, so that means that we have to find a good way of using that information to our benefits. Right? And, and one of the things uh, is there also to um, bring in new tools. Think about uh, AI. Many of you are already using that, uh, artificial intelligence, to order structure, basically, to give structure and to provide better data analysis. But also think about connecting different fields. Say, for instance, the huge amounts of data that you have in genetics to huge amounts of data that you are generating with imaging. Right? You can connect that. So we need to work on that, and we have a lot of, yeah, Capacity, but also challenges there, right. I think, Arjen. Right. Yeah? So these are the first two points that I wanted yeah. to... Very good. Yeah. I, think, I think the next point actually was going, a point that was Martin is actually was going to make it. And let's, let me do Martin now. Okay, yeah. so Martin would say, start your company. Because the best way actually to translate knowledge from fundamental science and bring it to the cl clinic is actually start a company. I would say, well, there are other ways to do translational neuroscience, but that's what he would say. He is the CEO of uh, Macrobium. Uh, working on, on two chemical, uh, two uh, uh, medicinal chemistry uh, uh, targets uh, that are going to be used in Parkinson's disease. Now, challenge four and five are for Yolanda. Yeah, so actually, I, th I think it's, I see so many impressive research that we're all doing here. <coughs> on the other hand, I see also what's happening in the world. Therapies are really getting closer to persons who have diseases that affect the brain, which is unimaginable, but it's becoming imaginable. And we have patient cohorts, we have people who really are waiting very long for those therapies. So what we need to do is to make sure that we connect with those parties who are making these drugs and treatments and try these, uh, these um, compounds in patients. We're also developing uh, them ourselves. So we need to be the initiative leaders here for bringing those drugs potential drugs to the patients. Another thing is that we are not wanting to do these things top-down, like we are the scientists and we know what's good for the patients. Patient involvement is so important, and it has happened to me many times that I thought that something was very good for my patient, and the patient said, no, wait a minute, listen, this is what we want. So I think we need to be partnering with patients much more than we are already doing. And I think that's the most important thing. Excellent. All right. So the last thing uh, I think is that we would say as a group, we want to provide value to society. That comes obviously from working with patients. 
it comes from working with younger generations. It works from you know, starting with excellent science and actually making an impact. Um, thank you very much. We'll see you all back on stage sure. later on. Thank you very much, Yolanda and Guus.